Hi guys, welcome back to Prophecy Unfolding. It's so good to be with you here today on a very, very special day of the year. Most have probably seen um, going around. It is now what we call Yom Kippur, um, or in English terms, the Day of Atonement. This is such a special day and such significance for even for us as believers in remembering the sacrifice of what Christ actually did. In today's video, I wanted to give a little bit of background to it because there's probably a lot of people like myself who wouldn't have delved hugely into kind of the, the holidays or the, the, the feasts um, that Jews would actually celebrate and they have some great significance to us as believers um, and symbolic, it's so symbolic to us as believers. So today I just wanted to touch on that, but also what I believe God, what way he's gonna actually work it to bring an end to everything. Um, so today's video, I just wanted to share a little bit on that. Um, if it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button, guys. Become part of the family. There's other things that I'm going to be throwing out. But today, I really wanted to concentrate on this because it's such a special day for us to remember. So enjoy it, take it to heart, and I'll see you on the other side. Right, guys, yum. Kippur, um, Day of Atonement. It's been coming, a lot of people have been talking about it over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's such a special day, obviously to both believers in Christ and people that would obviously, Jews, that would be in Judaism, um, it's significant to them as well. For themselves, it's the holiest day of the year. It's the, well, some people, some of them call it the Sabbath of Sabbaths. Obviously being the Day of Atonement, the representation of what um, Yom Kippur is is so significant to us as believers. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background on what exactly they do um, in terms of how the Jews would kind of celebrate this day um, or partake in this day. But the main thing is for, for us as believers, how we would partake in something like this or remember something like this. Um, so for the Jews, yeah, as I said, it's the Day of Atonement. It's the holiest uh, day of the year in Judaism. It's, it's the holiest day that they have. Um, the main kind of precept or concept of it is for both atonement and repentance. Um, they obviously traditionally observe this day um, as a holy day for fasting, intensive praying, and spending kind of most of their day probably in the synagogue services. It's generally what they do. But the Day of Atonement, going back to even when the temple would have been would have been around at that stage, was the time that the high priest would go in to the Holy of Holies, where where um, obviously God would have dwelt, and then he had would have sprinkled the blood um, on the altar. It was obviously to cleanse the nation of Israel of sin um, for the past year. This, this is very very symbolic to us um, as believers. But some of the actions that they would take, I would actually like the likes of fasting, praying, absolutely no work. Who doesn't like not having a day off work and using that day to remember what God has actually done for us? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing to do, remembering those things. And it's only been in the past really a couple of years I've been thinking about these days. Um, my own mother would be big on them. She always wanted to do it. But here it's not hugely celebrated, but I think it's something that we should start to do um, for believers. The symbolic side of this is so, so needed. It's so strong. And when we see what they've done kind of in the past with the temple, we see exactly what Christ has done for us. He took that step in as the high priest. We remember that it was Christ and through his sacrifice, that he made reconciliation possible with God for us, especially as it was accomplished through the life, suffering and death of Christ and also the resurrection. Jesus, by doing what he done, he became our high priest once and for all. And we read that in Hebrews 4, from 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace 
with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Powerful scripture. It really summarizes what Christ actually done for us. We profess to be kind of believers in Christ. We really should know and have confidence to be able to enter and actually be with God. That was never there before. It was one man could do it for a whole nation where Christ stepped in and done it for everybody. And that was our way in to be reconciled in terms of man to God. And another scripture really that kind of touches home is also found in Hebrews 9. He entered once and for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and of calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing eternal redemption. His sacrifice gave us the way to be able to see the Father. And I don't mean in terms of physically seeing him, but being able to come into the throne room of God in terms of supplication and prayer and in the indwellance of where God actually is. Powerful, powerful, powerful. This is the fundamental and foundation of our belief in Christ that through his life, his death and resurrection, he made a way possible for all of us to be able to receive the gift of salvation through his death by faith through grace or by grace through faith. We have, we have got salvation and be able to obviously stand before God. What an awesome thing that he done for us guys. And a phrase that they use, and I only found this out today, it's such it's a powerful phrase actually. Um, I'm not great with pronunciations, but the phrase that they use is panim el panim, which means face to face. When Christ did what he did on the cross and he said it's finished and it was done and it was over, the veil was torn completely from top to bottom, which made a way for us to become face to face with God, or Panem, El Panem, with the Father. It's such a great thing. Now, when I, as I'm actually studying some of the, 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 the festivals or some of the feasts, some of them have huge meaning. The veil was torn so that we can become face to face with God. That's what Christ has done for us. And another powerful scripture I'll give you as well is in Romans, Romans 5.10. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? The significance of this day for all believers, guys, with everything that's going on in the world, everything we see happening, if you're one of the, the, the watchmen who's looking out for the signs of the times, and we see time drawing closer and closer to the return of Yeshua, this day is significant for us to be able to share with people that the atonement was there and is set in place for you, that Christ died so that you may receive salvation. It's only but a prayer away, the belief in what he done for you. And this is the encouragement we should be giving people, that salvation is not earned. We cannot earn it. There's nothing we can do so that we can boast, but it was, it's a free gift that's been given. And this is the message that should be ringing across everywhere Jesus is coming soon but there's still time now is the day of salvation don't wait for a year down the line or five years down the line stop expecting to have the full career and the full lifespan and kids and grandkids and then when you're old you'll find out who God is now is the time for your salvation he's here he's almost at, he's at the door some would say he's knocking he's about ready to come but now he's given us the grace we have another day to live now is the time to receive the salvation it's such a special day guys and if i'm not mistaken at the end of this day of yom kippur of atonement they blow the last shofar I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I'm nearly sure that's what's, what's done. That's hugely significant. And I believe when Christ comes, and at the end of all things, he will be ridded of all sin, and it's going to be on the final day. And I believe that could be a Yom, Yom Kippur, whenever that comes and wherever that happens. I just think it has super significance to both, obviously, our daily um, lives as, as believers, but also end time prophecies. God uses these. He uses these feasts as remembrance of what he did when we look at the, the spring feasts and then in the fall feasts we see potentially what's going to happen. 
still has to be fulfilled. Guys, now is the time to be serious with God. Find him while he can be still be found. He's there. He's not a million miles away. And I always tell this to people, if there's anyone watching who doesn't have a relationship with Christ, it's a, such a personal thing. People looking for the evidence of God or the evidence that he's there. And I always explain it like this. My relationship with God, obviously, or with, with Christ is so personal. It's almost like a, it's almost like a toothache. I can't explain it to you. I can't make you feel the toothache or see it or hear it, smell it, etc. But I feel, I know within me that it's there. Christ is the same. When we accept him, he comes and he indwells with you. And you see change without change being forced. That's what your relationship with Christ is like. He can transform a dirty, bad sinner like myself into something that he's always called to be transformed a transformed life this is the message of the gospel guys it's a short message i said i throw it out there yom kippur is a special day it's the day of atonement and for us as believers in christ yeshua as some people will pronounce his name today is a day that we remember that not our works but everything he done made a way for us to obviously have a way a reconciliation with God to be able to come before the Father and he is our high priest now and forever he is the high priest it's a special day I will do a few more guys if you're if you're still this far in the video I'm going to be doing a, f a kind of a, a few bits and pieces other different types of videos but really it's all about expressing and creating the urgency guys now is the time to find salvation the world is starting to crumble, things are happening fast, Christ is at the door, but salvation is on your lap. It's here now, you're hearing this message now, which means salvation is right there, that you can accept Christ as your saviour. It's a simple prayer to ask him into your life, to rid you of all the stuff that you've done, and to free you for him to help you to become the person he wants you to become, that he's called you to become, and let him be your salvation. Money doesn't do it, relationships don't do it, careers don't do it, kids don't do it. They do not bring what Christ brings. The fruits of the Spirit is what indwells you when you accept Christ into your heart. Short message, guys. As I always say, God's always in control. And keep the faith.